green and steel proudly presents 12 three minute rounds for the British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Championship live and exclusive on Box Nation the home of boxing your officials are appointed by the Commonwealth Boxing Council and the British Boxing Board of Control your three scoring judges at ringside are Mr. Phil Edwards of Preston, Mr. Howard Foster of Doncaster, and Mr. Terry O'Connor of Birmingham. Your British Boxing Board of Control steward in charge is Mr. Robert Smith of Cowbridge, South Wales. Your time hit the bell is Nick White. And when the action begins, your referee in charge is Victor Lachlan of Paisley, Scotland. And now to introduce the contestants. Firstly, the challenger fighting out of the red corner with a record of 31 wins from 33 fights with 17 wins coming by stoppage. And yesterday's weighing, he scaled at 11 stone, 13 pounds, 12 ounces, and is wearing the black and gold coat shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Liverpool, please welcome the former British super middleweight champion and tonight's challenger for the title, Paul Smith. Across the ring is the British and Commonwealth champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue shorts, weighing in 11 stone, 13 pounds. As an amateur, he won back-to-back -back ABA championships in 2007 and 2008, and is undefeated as a professional, winning the Commonwealth championship in his ninth contest and adding the British championship in May. Tonight, he makes the third defence of his Commonwealth title and the first of the British title, undefeated with 13 wins, with 10 by stoppage. Please welcome, from Hammersmith in London, the reigning and defending British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion, St. George Groves. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Okay guys, if I get instructions in the dressing room, remember obey my commands at all time, defend yourselves at all time. God bless, touch gloves, touch them. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 three minute rounds for the British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Championship. I think this has got uh, all the hallmarks of a stirring contest in the making yeah just doing that head to head you, you could feel the tension coming from the two of them both of them want to win this fight so who's going to be the first one to force the pace is smith going to be able to make it into the toe to toe sort of fight which by common consensus is going to favor him or is groves well is he going to fight as the counter puncher will he be the mover that he was against James DeGale. I will say John Styles makes fights and these two styles they, they, they should gel on paper so it's gonna make a, a fantastic fight. DeGale, DeGale and Groves certainly didn't gel did it? It wasn't it was an interesting fight but it was by no stretch of the imagination a great fight. Well what I'll do I'll put that down to <laughs> I like to call him the tactical master in the corner Adam Booth. He set up a game plan where James DeGale could would struggle fighting on the front foot and turn George Groves into a counter puncher and Groves executed that plan very well that night still a very close fight you know a lot of people have seen it go either way but you know in, in Paul Smith he's got a different type of opponent someone's going to come at him someone's going to throw heavy shots George Groves was hooked on the fight game when he sat down and watched the telly with his dad in 1995 and watched Nigel Benn against Gerald McClellan a spellbinding performance a spellbinding contest at the London Arena and from then on what he wanted to be was a boxer Paul Smith well he's got fighting in his blood comes from a real fight family and uh, when he grew up as a kid he looked out of the bedroom and he could see Rotunda ABC uh, amateur boxing club from where he was living in the blood through and through and this is a chance to really revive his career and give him the chance of what he wants a rematch against De Gale. Groves is working at the job well this first round, keeping Smith at distance, keeping him at bay. Smith was uh, once in the highly publicised contender series over in the United States, one on the US-UK match up in uh, Newcastle in 2007, 
beat Jonathan Reed. That was really when he first came to prominence and then was included in the middleweight series over in America. Won his fight, but then was ruled out, got himself cut. Had those uh, two terrific battles on Merseyside against his rivals up there. Tony Quigley won the British title on a split decision and against Tony Dodson. Groves, in comparative terms, six years his junior, and in experience terms, very much the baby, just 13 fights behind him, 10 of which he's won by that stoppage. Two fighters just feeling each other out. You get the impression that the classier work maybe has come from Groves. Yeah, he just uses his jabs a little bit. Here Smith comes now. Good job there by Groves. Keeping it along, keeping it distance. Good left up there by Smith. Well, right on the bell, just as you felt that Groves had bossed the opening round. Good heavy punches from Paul Smith, and that'll give him heart. He's with Joe Gallagher. Well, he's a nervous job. Adam's wanting to be more authoritative of the job, but he isn't he's scared of me. That's that shot from Smith, it was a solid one. Groves felt that, he was caught in the first round by Kenny Anderson, put down, and he didn't come a long way away there, absolutely stopped in his tracks. That no, was a big right down there from Smith, he threw Groves through a lazy jab, right hand over the top of Smith. Uh, you know, the, the bell couldn't come sooner for George Groves, you know, he definitely felt the reaction there of that big right hand. So, oh, how, so how did you score that I, first I one? still give the first round to Groves, he controlled most of the fight, most of the round, sorry, with that, with that jab. Um, and the, the clash of work come from Groves, but, you know, Smith has shown, you know, he's got the power. Paul Smith's been preparing for this, sparring with the Lincolnshire youngster Callum Johnson, Commonwealth Games medalist. Groves has been sparring Chris Eubank Jr. and he says, remember that name as if you could forget it, he's <laughs> one to watch. Well, he had a wake-up call in the last few seconds of that first round. It had all gone according to plan until the last ten seconds when Smith found the target with that big, big right hand. Nice double jab there from Groves. Smith keeping a nice tight, nice tight. Oh, oh look at Smith, right down he went. Well, I was just saying, keeping a nice tight guard, and then in the second round, a lot about that. He looks unsteady as he gets to his feet, says, I'm all right. Groves will try to finish it here. Oh, another big right hand. It's all over. Smith stopped it. He stopped it in the second round. And he falls backwards onto the ropes. George Groves, in less than two rounds, has finished Paul Smith's challenge. Cracking right down there, George Groves. I could see what he was trying to do. He threw a jab to the head, jab to the body, threw another jab to the body, drew, drew Smith's lead, and then right down over the top. You know, Look at Paul Smith, his hope he's all right for there now. Smith can barely believe it. He's sitting on a stool on the far side of the ring in front of our commentary position. David Hay congratulates George Groves. I think Hay's thrown many better punches than those that Groves found in that second round. No, it's a tremendous shot. Like I said, I knew you could see what he was doing. He threw a lovely jab. Then he threw a jab to the head, jab to the body, jab to the body, jab to the head. And a single jab the body and a right hand over the top, which caught caught Smith uh, flush. You know, I, you know it, was a, it was a good case for the referee to stop the fight there and then. You know, he's unsteady as soon as he got up. Well, he's got up. He's on his feet. He can't believe it. He can't believe that he was caught like that. I don't think he's really now. Even now, I don't think he's too sure exactly what happened. Well, what, what, what happened was he was hit by two absolute pearlers from this fella. The one who uh, James DeGale calls the ugly ginger kid. He can fight a bit. He can definitely fight a bit. They were cracking shots. You know, he's shown, he shown against DeGale, he, he can box. He's shown tonight that he got plenty of power in that right hand. And it was the way he set it up, it was lovely boxing. I wonder if Nigel Ben's watching somewhere. If so, he'd have enjoyed that. That was the punches from Smith. 
that was at the end of the first round. That was when Smith was coming on strong against George Groves. But in the second round, well, Groves found just what he wanted. Bosch, lovely shot, just threw that jab, pushed, pushed it out, sort of like a blinding stick, covered it, co blinded Smith, and then a right up around the side, right on the jaw. And like I said, it was a good case for the referee to start the fight straight away. Smith was very instead when he got up. The lights went out with that shot. Smith bravely got up, and the fight went on. And then more of the same, not really a clean one, that. And referee Victor Lachlan said, that'll do, that's enough. Yeah, good call for the referee. Like I said, he could have started from the first one. You know, but Smith's awarded, give him the benefit of the doubt. But, you know, good, good punch in there by George Groves. Fantastic right hand. Well, I thought that fight would go long. How wrong can you be? In the second round, it's all about this fella. Ladies and gentlemen, at 1 minute 18 seconds of round 2, your referee, Mr Victor Lachlan, has stopped the contest. He deemed that Paul Smith was in no position to continue. The winner, and still the British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion in the blue corner. From Hammersmith, London, St. George Groves. <laughs> Ladies and well, gentlemen, please, a big round of applause. 60 for the years play. of uh, Young Boxers of the Year, and a uh, fair few of them have gone on to become great world champions. George Groves currently has that accolade, and he's shown that as well as being a boxer, he's also a puncher, and he looks to me as though he could go an awful long way. Yeah, definitely, you know, he showed a lot of class tonight, you know, it was only two rounds, but it was just the way he set that right hand up, it was a perfect shot, and the set up, the set up was a really good, really good way to set up our right hand, and, you know, I'm just pleased for Paul Smith, you know, he's not too seriously Ladies injured, he looked a bit uh, troubled at the end. Well, it's a clean knockout, isn't it? So no lasting yeah. damage done, and there's the belt for George Groves, Commonwealth belt and the famous Lonsdale belt there, draped across his shoulder, George Groves, likeable and articulate, and today a very, very good fighter as well, retaining his titles and doing it in style, he really did. Yeah, we kind of asked more to sh showcase him after his um, young, young Boxer of the Year award, you know, that was a, the perfect example why he got voted Young Boxer of the Year, you know, fantastic. Fantastic right hand there. Adam Booth, his trainer there, to his right. David Hay uh, on the other side, right as we look at it. That's Adam Booth. Hasn't he done a good job with him? Yeah, you know, brilliant. You know, I, I speak to Adam. I speak to Adam quite a bit. You know, he, he certainly knows his stuff, and he makes sure there's a game plan each time they fight. Uh, you know, and uh, that, that was like I said, that was a perfect setup for a right hand. He threw the jab, he blinded him, bang, right hand. He got caught at the end of the first round. Didn't let it phase him, though, in any sort of sense, did he? Not, not at all. You know, he got caught, you know, right on the bell, sat down, come out, set back off on that jab. So as the celebrations continue, let's find out what the boys up in the studio made of it. Actually, Richie, getting caught at the end of that first round, in some ways, seemed to inspire him. He was annoyed with himself, wasn't he? Yeah, he... When Paul Smith delivered that shot right on the bell, uh, he seemed to grit his teeth. He was annoyed with himself. Yeah. That must have woke him up because the, the punches that he, he actually finished Smith off with, that was a quality right hook. We often see great left hooks land, but not many right quality hooks like that. Round the guard, it was a peach of a shot. Yeah, Tremendous he looked, punch. Yeah, he saw, he saw it, he looked for it, they'd obviously trained for it. That's when, the end there of he is the getting end caught. Of the, oh, that's, that's the shot at the end of the first round. Great mm. shot from yeah. Smith, that Listen, was. Listen, another five or ten seconds. Yeah. That puts George under a lot Look of pressure. Watch his face, though. He's, he's furious, there. wasn't he? He's he was furious. furious. And then that's the first thing I noticed. Yeah. He's, just, he's so angry with himself because he also knows that he's given the guy an opportunity. I yeah. thought my prediction was on. To no, be honest. <laughs> no, he didn't. That's another pound you lost. Uh, but the, the, the shot, the, the first shot that dropped him, the second shot's high in the temple, and at that stage, Paul was gone. There was an argument. We'll have a look at it when we come back. But the shot that did him was about as good and pun inch perfect, centimetre perfect. Let's hear from George Groves and see what he made of it all with uh, Ronald again. George, you've got the Lonsdale belt over your shoulder, the Commonwealth belt around your waist, an explosive defence of your titles. Your thoughts on that performance and that victory? Um, 
I'm happy with it, obviously. I, I came out, the game plan was to control Smith. I can control him long. I said that he wouldn't be able to box with me long. And, you know, it, it, literally that was just using my jab. Use my jab as, as fast and as quick, keep him guessing. And then when the opportunities come, you know, nail him with a right hand, nail him with a left hook. And, you know, I hold my hands up. It come earlier than I thought. But um, I saw the opportunity, I hit it, uh, <coughs> I threw the shot and it went in and, and that was it. It was over. Before that, at the end of round number one, from our vantage point, it looked like he caught you pretty solid with a pretty clean shot. How much did that wake you up and sharpen you up if you needed to be sharpened up anymore? No, I was trying to, I was trying to be as sharp as possible. I, I've not been known to start slow, but um, no, it, it, it was one of those fights, you know, you, you make mistakes and you get you paid for them, and usually mistakes happen at the early part of the fight, so you have to be switched on. And yeah, at the end of the round, he, he come wading in, and my defences weren't quite tight enough, but... Um, it was about getting into a rhythm, you know, using, using my sharp front foot, using my jab. Um, it, I thought it worked really well. I controlled him in the first round. Even whether it was, I wasn't landing big shots, but I was controlling the fight. I knew once the big shots landed, he wouldn't last the distance. And just elaborate on that shot, because when it landed in the second round, that right hook, I mean, he, smoked, he showed tremendous spirit to get up off the canvas. But what, what did it feel like from your perspective, landing that right hook? Did you think the fight was over there and then? Yeah, I did. I, I'm surprised he got up and I'm... You know, I thought he still looked wobbly on his feet, so I knew that one solid shot, didn't let, try not to let him grab me or anything like that to try and survive, and then, then it would be over. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the sort of opening on the left-hand side, I knew I'll just throw the right hand, whether it, if it lands in the body or head, it's going to be a solid shot and it's going to hurt. I think it landed right on the button. Indeed it did. Now, you said when we spoke during the week that you're happy to remain at domestic level as long as you are stressed in fights, as long as you are tested. How stressed and tested did you feel in there tonight? Because it looked, from our vantage point, you made it look easy. I know it's never easy, but how stressed did you feel in the contest? You know, it, when I talk about being stressed, it starts at the beginning of a camp. It's, it's not talking about when I'm actually in the ring. When a fight's made, I'm under stress to improve as a fighter. I'm under stress to be in the gym, learning new stuff with Adam, which I'm doing day in, day out. And then you'll see it when I get in here um, fighting. You know, my last fight, Adam wouldn't let me hold, hold my feet and throw hard shots. I've been able to do it. I'm maturing. I'm hitting harder. Tonight, I was able to do it, and you can see what happens when I do. Now, Paul Smith, common opponent. James DeGale, James DeGale stopped him in nine to win the British title. You've done it in two. I know you said that a rematch is inevitable. Does this make it inevitable sooner rather than later, given the job you've done on Paul Smith tonight? You know, I'm not sure. As I say, I, um, I'm happy to stay at British title level, but these guys are getting cleaned up pretty quick. And if I run out of opponents, then maybe I might have to bash up James DeGale again. But, um, or maybe move on to something better. I don't know. Um, as I say, I just want to improve and I want to fight a variety of people, not just one person. I can't keep beating that poor man. I can't keep taking his titles. So we'll, I'll leave him in peace. He can uh, sleep easy tonight because he's not on my immediate radar still. Well, let's have a word with Adam Booth, your trainer. Adam, your thoughts on the performance and the victory that, James has, uh, that George has produced tonight? Yeah, the second round was what the first round should have been. But he has this thing and you know, he keeps looking for shots in the first round that aren't always there. But it, don't, don't forget, this is his 14th fight. 14th fight, you know, in, in professional fighting terms, when you look at world champions, he's still a baby. So, you know, it was a good win to get. Um, I thought the fight would have gone longer, got longer, but Paul was just unfortunate. He just happened to get caught with a shot, and that can happen to anyone. But, um, but I do feel that George had already established his jab, which is all he was supposed to do. He has a world-class jab already. And fighting guys, you know, with orthodox styles, you're going to see George develop into a world-class fighter. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to look at guys that are going to keep improving him as a fighter for the fighter he needs to be when eventually he gets to world class level. And so where do these guys, where do they reside? Is it you taking them stateside? Is it going to be across Europe? Where do you find these guys to keep him learning and keeping improving? At the, uh, <laughs> um, there's, 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 listen, there's a lot of good super middleweights in the world. There's a lot of good sparring he can still get. We have time. The, the downside is that he's British champion and he has to learn in 12 round title fights and that's a lot of pressure. But we also have the ability to step out and put 10 rounders in. And, and you know, that's what that's what I plan for him to do because it's all about what gets George to the top. Let's have a word with the recently retired undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, former WBA heavyweight champion of the world. You're the haymaker. I mean, you've provided some explosive finishes in your time. How impressed were you with that finish that George produced? Oh, I was uh, over the moon in static. I, I know he can punch hard. I've sparred with him. You know, I've seen what he does in the gym. But he's starting to do what he's done in the gym in the ring now. And uh, you can just keep seeing performances like that, I'm pretty sure. You know, and Paul Smith's a very, very solid, durable, durable fighter. And you, you saw how he dispatched with him there. One clean shot was what, what it took. And um, he's, there was plenty more. He could have done that for 12 rounds. I've, saw how, I've seen how hard he's been training. And um, that's sort of the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to see from George.
So at what rate do you think we will see the progression? Because you crammed a whole wealth of experience into just less than 30 fights. What rate do you think George is going to come on at? So he's, on the, he's on the right on the right schedule. You know, in my 15th fight, I was I fought for the European title. You know, he's definitely not too far away from that. You know, um, you know, James Gales has won the, Euro, the European title. So, you know, he, he he's right there. He's right where I am, sort of comparatively. And uh, I envisage him for the next, you know, next six or seven fights. I wouldn't be surprised if you know he's he's fighting for world titles. Just one question on what's going on in the world of David Hay. Being at world-class level, you're only fighting like twice a year. Does it, does it feel as though you're actually retired or does it feel you're in between top fights at the moment? How are you finding it? When I was walking out with George just then, it felt like I was coming to fight, to be honest. And I got little butterflies and thought, uh, thought I was going to come out to fight. But um, it was, uh, no. here we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay for the moment. I'm okay for the moment. Well, listen, great to see you ringside. George, let's end it with you. Given the short night's work that you've had, when do you think we're going to see you out in a boxing ring again? I'd love to be out again before Christmas. I think that's realistic. Um, I've had a long, hard camp. I'm fit, and you say I'm not, I'm not too uh, worn and torn from that fight. So have a week off, be back in the gym. I'd love another one before Christmas. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a title fight. I just want to be busy, you know me. I just want to be busy. So, yeah, one before Christmas would be lovely. Well, congratulations. Still, British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion, well done. Cheers, Ron. Thank you very much.